So this is really dumbing it down. I'm dumbing it down because I'm dumb. <laughs> Hey, welcome back. Hopefully you watched my last episode where I was starting to install the ladder rack on my enclosed trailer. Uh, that episode, I was shortening the brackets in an effort to try and make it so this rack, these crossbars don't end up a foot and a half off the top of the trailer. Uh, so this time I'm installing the crossbars. I also am installing angle brackets on the crossbars. That's how we're gonna put the solar panels up here. And I am really excited for this part. The Ladder rack has been a little bit frustrating, a little bit more tedious than I expected. It's essential, but it isn't exactly the most interesting part of the build so far. So I've mentioned before that a portion of the ladder rack is going to support a roof deck. Well, that's going to happen here at the back end of the trailer with these three crossbars. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to pull this off, but that's the goal. And I'm still looking for a ladder to go up right here as well. But forward of that is going to be the solar. We have two 210 watt panels and one 100 watt panel for a total of 520 watts. And those solar panels are going to be mounted using these aluminum angle brackets. I've used these before. I've used these in a couple of van builds and they work great. Um, the ones I'm using today, they're about three and a half inches on one side and three inches on the other. They were about 35 bucks for a 10 pack. They're great because they're super strong, they don't bend, and they have slotted holes giving you a lot more flexibility when positioning everything. Sometimes I worry about things moving when using slotted holes, but you can see these brackets have serrated faces which really bite into whatever you're mounting them to. Now these brackets are designed for mounting solar panels. Um, they're definitely designed to take the weight. They're typically used more in a residential or commercial setting, but as long as you're mounting them on a flat surface, they're gonna work great. So now I'm installing the angle brackets. I've already measured everything. I'm evenly spacing the brackets to spread out the load. And I've mentioned this before, but each crossbar consists of three pieces, three sections of tube. It's a sort of telescoping system. That's what makes it a universal ladder rack. But the middle section has a T-slot. It accepts square nuts. Lucky for me, I had some extra parts. I had a whole new bag of hardware because I had one of the brackets fail. They sent me a whole new box. You can see my last episode about that. But I used two additional square nuts in that T-slot. That's how I'm gonna put the brackets on the middle section of the crossbar. That way I can avoid drilling holes any more than I have to. But the outer sections of the crossbar, I did have to drill through that. So anyway, one crossbar will have six brackets and the other will have four. I'm positioning the brackets low so that the solar panels are low and out of the way. I wanted a roof rack system where I could utilize the full length of the trailer so I could carry things like canoes and kayaks. And this is possible because the solar panels are down low, out of the way. And I like this because once you get to the campsite, you can take your canoe, kayak, whatever you're carrying off, and you then have your solar working for you. Um, and you still have a five by seven roof deck at the back. So. I just think this is gonna make the trailer a lot more versatile. So next I wanna get into my panel design, why I chose the panels I did. So disclaimer here, I'm no expert. I'm gonna tell you what I did, what I came up with, what I've learned so far. I'm still learning. If I misspeak at any point, definitely somebody can call me out and correct me in the comments. But if you're new to solar, if you're new to wiring, hopefully this is a good starting point. But definitely do your own research and find out what works best for your application. I've got two, two 10 watt panels. I wanted a third panel, a hundred watt. Um, this is a really crude picture, but 210, 210, 100. This is the fan. This is one of the crossbars, and then this is the second one back. So I'm going to start off right away and say this is definitely not a paid endorsement, paid advertisement, nothing like that. But I've had really good luck with this company, New Power. I've gone with them since day one. I've done a few van builds, and I've had no problems with them whatsoever. They seem to be more affordable than the big name brands like Renogy. It's my opinion that most solar panels today, they seem to all be made in the same factory in China or somewhere like that. Um, I'm sure there's a few exceptions to the rule. But for me, I just go with whatever panel fits the space the best, and I try to get it as cheap as possible. I always go with monocrystalline panels. The polycrystalline, that's the less efficient blue colored panel. I just stick with the monocrystalline. There's only a slight difference in price. 
And I would always try to go with the latest generation of solar panel, no matter what brand you go with, because with every generation, they seem to make little tweaks and they get slightly more efficient. So anyway, that's the end of my spiel there. Uh, I'll show you here what I went with. This is the 210 watt panel that I went with, and it is not the latest generation. You can see some of these panels say they are upfitted with 9BB features. That's the latest thing that I'm seeing. Uh, just makes the panels more efficient, like I was saying. But I got two of the 210 watt panels and I went with another 100 watt panel of the same generation. And that's important because that means all of my panels are gonna have the same operating voltage. More on that in a little bit, but all in all, I'm gonna end up with 520 watts of solar. So now I'm getting the panels ready to be bolted together. I have to measure, mark, and drill some holes. All right, so here's the setup. This is kind of just a test fit. So for my setup, I went with a parallel connection. For my application, for a couple reasons, parallel just was the only way I could go. Series, it's probably the more obvious choice to a lot of people, especially if you're doing just a simple setup. One of the downsides to series connection is if one panel becomes shaded, that's gonna decrease the performance of not only that panel, but all of the panels because it's wired in series so if you want maximum efficiency in partial shade parallel wiring is the obvious choice part of it gets shaded like in that previous scenario it will not affect the power output of the rest of the panels but parallel comes with added cost you're not increasing the voltage with every panel you're adding all the current um, so you need inline fuses, batter wire, and if you're going over long distances, it's going to add up. It's going to get expensive. And it's just easier to find the common gauges like 10 or 12. Once you start getting into 8 gauge or 6 gauge, it's not as easy to find and it gets expensive. But the main reason why I went with parallel is I had to mix panels. The only way you can do that without completely destroying the efficiency of the setup is to run in parallel. But the only way you can do that is if you match the voltage. So the operating voltage of these 210 watt panels is 16.77. And I found a panel that is the same voltage as the 210. So it's a perfect match. For whatever reason, I don't know if it's sold out or discontinued, but I had a very hard time finding this 100 watt panel they have a newer one you can buy if i were to take a panel like the newer 100 watt panel that's more efficient <laughs> that runs at a lower voltage so all of a sudden since these are wired in parallel the the voltage of these two are going to go down so you're not going to get the same output from the whole system so even though this is the older panel it's probably of the same generation as these 210 watt panels i'm going to get better performance with this versus the newer 100 watt panel. Ideally, you wouldn't mix panels, you would have all the panels of the same size, but, but when you're dealing with small roofs, lots of obstacles, sometimes it just makes sense to kind of fit your panels around the limited real estate that you have, and this is what I came up with. If you want to maximize the output in partial shade, and if you have to mix panels, if you know what you're doing, if you do it right, you can do it with parallel wiring. The other reason why I wanted to kind of mock this up in the garage, I'm not going to keep these all together. This would be a handful to get up all bolted together. I just wanted to make sure that my holes lined up. Kind of just wanted to see how these wires would be routed roughly. So another thing to mention that with parallel connections, you need to run inline fuses at the panels before you get to your branch connector. So each one of these lines is going to have uh, a fuse and then it's going to go to a three to one connector. So then obviously I have just one positive wire and one negative wire going into the top of the trailer. But I've already noticed that in order to connect these all to one spot, I end up having to kind of cross the corners here, which isn't ideal because 
I do think I have a fan very close to this. I may have been able to avoid that if I had flipped one of these panels, then the wires would have been running at each other. Um, but I like the idea of keeping them all oriented the same. I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever. But they do make a 3 to 1 connector that has like 4, 5, 6 inch pigtails. Each split has an extension. So what that's going to allow me to do is to run the wires kind of close to each other. And I don't think I'll have to cut the corner like that. I'll be able to leave it a little slack. And then all of the, the 3 to 1 will connect somewhere under this panel and then we'll run <clears throat> the main wire that goes into the entry gland into the trailer it'll go off from there this was the biggest panel that I found at the time by New Power I think I'm maximizing the space that I have so every time I say New Power I feel like I'm talking like Kripke from Big Bang Theory <laughs> I think now we're ready to actually start putting the crossbars up they already have the L brackets installed, so once those are up on the trailer, I should start be, being able to drop these panels in. So. so this is kind of where we left off at the end of the last episode, installing these crossbars. And here I am installing the gland already like an idiot. <laughs> you wouldn't know that I've done three van builds already because this is kind of a newbie mistake. The gland should go on later. Ideally, you'd put the solar panels down, run the wires through, then put the gland down, and then seal that up. Now what I've set myself up for is I'm going to have to somehow fish that wire through the gland into the top of the trailer through a three-quarter inch hole that I can't see. So that's going to be fun. But I do know I'm coming from the future. It works out just fine. But do yourself a favor. Learn from my mistakes. Anyway, here I am finally putting the solar panels on the ladder rack. The 100 watt panel is going to go in the middle. I have a box underneath it to kind of keep it aligned so that I can put the bolts through to secure the panels to each other. Now, if I could make one more suggestion, I would add aluminum angle on the front and back of these panels. That would tie them all together. They would sort of hinge on those angle brackets and that would make it possible to lift up one end. Then you could prop it up, you could wire it. It would make it more serviceable and it would have made it a lot easier to bolt all the panels together. It was too far of a reach for me to easily get to the bolts. So if it were tipped up and I could get to the bolts and I could wire, man, that would be so much easier. So that's what I did. I didn't have angled aluminum, but I did have some lumber. So this is what I came up with. I've got the panels securely propped up and I've got some boards and plywood laid down so I can work on things without damaging the roof. Now I can get to work on the panels. So this next part, it involved a lot of zip ties. My basic idea is that I try to run it on the frame of the solar panel and I try to avoid having any of the wiring touching the underside of that panel itself just because there's going to be a lot of heat there and that's only going to make the panel less efficient if you do that. All right so there's that. Each positive wire from each panel goes to an inline fuse which then goes to a three-way branch connector. They then combine to one wire which will run to the entry gland and go into the trailer. <laughs> So here it is, here's the final result. Um, I think it looks great. The solar panels are maximizing that roof space that was available. Uh, that roof fan is tucked in there, nice and cozy. But you can see that space I'm left with behind the solar panels uh, where that roof deck is gonna go. I'm gonna put another bracket on the left side now that I have a replacement and I can put the crossbars there, but what's the best option for supporting the deck and spanning the distance between the crossbars? I'm definitely open to suggestions. I'm thinking maybe Unistrut, but that stuff gets expensive fast. I've actually also got the option to add an additional bracket on both sides, so I'd have four brackets per side, and then I'd have less of a distance to span. I've also considered using a 2x4 or a 2x6 in place of the aluminum crossbar. Uh, it looks like the brackets would accept one. I haven't actually measured it, but it would definitely make adding the decking a little bit easier. But is that the right direction? I'm not sure. I guess that's a problem for another episode. Now, sadly, I didn't get any video of me fishing this wire into the trailer, but here is proof I did get it in. It wasn't too bad. So then I wanted to temporarily hook everything up and make sure the new solar was working. And it wasn't. <laughs> so turns out my new SOK battery was dead. Um, I had received it in the mail, never charged it. I assumed it would have a charge. More on that to come. 
I got a little crash course when it comes to lithium. Lithium is new for me. I've always dealt with AGM batteries in the past. The solar was working. I don't have any figures for you yet. There will be more episodes to come where I go over the battery issues I had, the electronic system, the solar, all of that stuff. But that's going to come up later. The next episode, I'm going to be installing the escape window and maybe get into some of the issues with the trailer wiring, and I'm going to fix them. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.